I just think it's kind of cool I got the best singer. I beat Celine Dion, you guys. <laughs> there listening to this introduction. I've done a lot of things in my career and I just start getting really tired and hearing about going back and thinking about all the things that I've done in my life. And uh, I shouldn't say this because it makes me sound older than I am, but this coming December I'm celebrating 50 years in show business. That's a fun I guess I would say 50 years in broadcasting because like Paul said I started uh, on television when I was five and continuing to, uh, to broadcast. So there are pros and cons, you guys, about saying that I've been in the business 50 years. Obviously, the pros, it's longevity. And I've been able to do a lot of different things, reinvent myself over the years. But there are definitely some cons to saying that I've been in the business uh, this long. Sometimes, you know, you say the name Donnie Osmond, and he's oh, man. He's been doing this since dirt was created, you know? <laughs> Didn't he do a duet with Moses? <laughs> it was actually Abraham. That's it. But, um, case in point, about five months ago, Marie and I did a Christmas uh, show, Christmas tour. We started out in Detroit, and then we subsequently moved to Chicago. So I flew out a couple uh, days early make sure the tech rehearsal went well and everything was set properly for the show. And there was a driver there waiting for me. I get in the car and now granted there, there's promotion all over. There were radio spots, there were television spots, there were posters, there were billboards, all promoting the Donnie and Murray Christmas show at the Fox Theater. Get your tickets, don't miss the show. So I get in this car and the driver says, so what are you doing in town? doing a show at the, uh, at the Fox Theater. He says, oh, you in show business? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the Donnie and Marie Christmas show. Oh, Donnie and Marie, yeah, yeah, I've seen billboards about that. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do in the show? <laughs> it's a true story. It, it gets better. It gets better. So I said, I'm Donnie. And he turns around and glances at me, and he says, Oh, did you replace the original? Because he's got to be 90 years old by now. <laughs> True story. Backhanded compliment, you know? But I, I'm grateful for the longevity that I've had in my career. It's, uh, I'm known for so many different things, because you have to keep reinventing yourself in show business. Now, earlier in the VIP party, I mentioned the fact that I won Dance of the Stars. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to see the trophy, it's over at the Flamingo. It's in a glass case. It's highly protected so Marie doesn't steal it. <laughs> Have you been watching the, this season of Dancing of the Stars? Have you watched it? Nobody's watching it? I think Gavin DeGroff, unfortunately, is going to go home tonight. I know Gavin. He and I did a couple songs together. I just, you know, that's going to be embarrassing to be kicked off of Dancing with the Stars. I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> Maybe I should ask Marie. <laughs> yeah, she's going to kill me. I don't care, I won. <laughs> but it's really interesting, you guys, to be known for so many different things. And it depends on the generation that you're talking to as to what they know you for. And I bring up Dancing with the Stars for a reason. About a week after I won the trophy, um, Marie and I are doing the show at the Flamingo, and I look down in the front row, there's this cute little 10-year-old boy. He's in his suit and tie, dressed to the nines. He wanted to come see the champion, right? So he, he couldn't take his eyes off me, and it was just the cutest thing. After the show, we do a meet and greet. You guys know what a meet and greet is. And, and uh, I see him in the line with his parents, and he's getting closer and closer to me, and the closer he gets to me, the more excited he becomes. Finally, he walks up to me, shakes my hand, and he says, Mr. Osmond, I didn't know you could sing, too. <laughs> So 
Uh, it really depends on who you talk to, the generation. Uh, uh, this last winter, I was at this, I live in, in Utah, and I went to Sundance, and uh, this kid, I think he was from Wisconsin, he was helping people get on the lifts, 21 years old. And a little long hair, he, he looked at me, dude, you're Donny Osmond. I said, dude, you're right. And he said, dude, I got to tell you, man, I love your radio show. You know how usually you turn down the commercials and turn up the music? I do the opposite. I turn up your stories and turn down the music. I love your stories. So this 21-year-old kid, I was a radio guy. But not everybody likes Donny Osmond. If you're about my age, and you're a teenager in the 70s, the last thing you want to admit is you like Donny Osmond. <laughs> You'd either be dead by now, or beat up severely. Five, uh, was it about five weeks ago? Yeah, about five weeks ago, the, during the meet and greet after one of the shows, this couple walks in. Line. And I could tell by the looks on this guy's face, about my age, like he grew up in the 70s. You know, you don't like Donnie. You like Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, you know, Cream, stuff like that. Not Donnie Osmond. And I could tell this guy was one of those guys. His wife dragged him to the show, especially to the meet Well, she was what I call a puppy lover. You know, she just loved puppy love. And she was so excited about getting my autograph. So, they walk, everybody gets an 8x10, one of Marie, one of me, and, and we sign our respective pictures, we take pictures with them, that's what happens in the main room. So they walk up to me, and, and she's so excited, please, please sign this now. So I put to Jennifer, love, Donnie Osmond, thank you, thank you, thank you. He's got my 8x10, and I grab it. I said, who would you like this to? And he said, just sign your name, because I don't want anybody to know I met you. <laughs> Here's, here's the funny part of the story, okay? As he was leaving the meet and greet, he turns to me with a smile on his face. Hey, Donnie, just got to let you know, I loved the show tonight. It was great. I really did. And I said, thank you. Don't worry. I won't tell anybody you said that. <laughs> so it, it really depends on, on who you talk to. You get a different... Oh, I, one more story just popped into my mind. Sorry, I'm going to be digressing here. I get billions of stories in my mind. My son... My 21 year old son, have five boys. By the way, my son Don right there, he, uh, give him a hand. He, he runs the logistics of our radio show. So, um, my, my fourth son, Christopher, and this is when he was in high school a few years ago, and he was in his junior year. And he comes upstairs one morning before going to school, and he has in his hands something. He said, well, I found this box in our basement, Dad. I didn't know you had it. And he opens it up. It's an old vintage Donny Osmond t-shirt, right? He says, can I wear this to high school? If you want to get beat up, go right ahead. <laughs> so he goes, and he comes back that afternoon with the most interesting look on his face. He said, Dad, can I have the box? Everybody in school wants one. <laughs> so, it's... It, Living my dynamics, it, it's so interesting. I know exactly what Justin Bieber is going to go through for the rest of his life, because I've lived it. But I'm very fortunate, you guys, and I recognize I'm very fortunate to be known by so many different generations and so many different things. I did a tour last summer. I've always wanted to do a show like this, where most of it is improv. Now, it's very scary. You, you go out on stage, you don't know what the show is going to be until you actually do it. There's a structure to the show, but I've always wanted to do this. And as the audience was coming into this theater, they, they had these cards they could sign out. I want Donnie to sing this. I want, I want him to talk about this. And it goes into this pile. And I come on stage, I do some songs, and says, okay, let's just do whatever. And I pull out a card, and it's from a little eight-year-old girl. She's in about the 10th row, uh, stage left, audience right. And she said, will you please sing the song from the Disney movie Milan? I was a singing voice for the... Uh, character called Captain Shang. I had everything ready in my computer, so I said, let's do it. Let's get down to business to defeat. And I'm looking at this little eight-year-old girl. She's having the time of her life. Loving it. I finish the song, applause, applause, applause. I pull out another card. It's from a guy. He says, I'm here tonight 
with my mom. She's celebrating her 99th birthday tonight. All she wanted for her birthday was to see Donny Osmond. I went from eight years old to 99. And I said, where are, I think her name was, uh, was it Grace, I think it was Grace. I said, Grace, where are you? And she was pretty much in the back. Spotlights couldn't follow me. I jump off the stage, turn the house lights on. I go clear in the back. And I pick up this frail little lady. And I just start, you are so beautiful. The band starts following me and everybody in the audience start taking pictures. Oh, that is so cute. That is so cute. And I finish the song, and I, I'm slow dancing with her. And as I finish, she grabs the mic, and, <laughs> and she says, Donnie, I've loved you ever since I was a little guy <laughs> I was just telling Tom Hung this. I'm on uh, KKLZ here locally. And these guys, a lot of construction going on uh, over the Flamingo. And these guys, I mean, these burly guys with big handlebar mustaches and big hard hats on. And I'm thinking, they're going be the last person to be a Donnie Osmond fan. And this guy, Donnie! Yeah? <laughs> I listen to your radio show all every day, man. I love you. So to, to him, I'm a radio guy. So I love the fact that I can enjoy so many different aspects of my life. And I love being in radio. And I'm not just saying that because of you, because of what we're doing here. Radio has been such an important part of my life. Yes, I was discovered on television, the Andy Williams show. But it wasn't until the early 70s that Radio, and if you don't like Donny Osmond, it's your fault because radio made me popular. But radio, when, when it grabbed a hold of my career, that's when things took off. I remember listening to Casey Kasem. He was radio god to me. I heard Casey Kasem in the early 70s, listening to the countdown, 1840. And when he said, the number one record all across America for the Osmond brothers, dun, 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 yeah, and one bad apple started. I thought, can life get any better? And it did. Later on that year, I'm listening to my radio god again, Casey Kasem. And he said, the number one record all across America for Donny Osmond. He said my name on the radio. I thought, and he played Go Away Little Girl. Everybody thinks it was puppy love. Go Away Little Girl was my biggest record. But when Casey Kasem said Donny Osmond, I thought, I can now die and go to Radio Heaven. I thought, that is the coolest, coolest thing. And here's why, uh, I'm running out of time. Dang, I have so many stories I want to tell you. But, um, here's why I love radio. Some people say it's a dying media. Don't believe it. Because with radio, you have ownership. Now, television is great and everything, but the director tells you what to see. They tell you, I want you to see this angle, I want you to see this much, I want you to see this close-up. You can sit on your couch and eat your potatoes and say, and not even think. Your imagination is gone. What happens with radio? Your imagination goes wherever it wants to go. I'm probably the only person in this room who hasn't seen Hunger Games. Have you seen Hunger Games? You have seen it? Is this on? <laughs> Have you seen Hunger Games? Okay. I haven't seen it. Some of my children have seen it. And I asked them the other day, guys, do you recommend it? So dad is so bloody. It's really, it's really gory, it's really bloody. I said, well, tell me about some of the scenes. And as they started to begin to explain the movie, they stopped. They, stopped. they said, wait a minute. There wasn't that much blood and gore in it. That's the sign of a great director. He leads you to a point and let you take it the rest of the way. That's why Hitchcock was such an amazing director and so revered. He never really saw everything that you really saw in your mind. They lead you to a point and your imagination takes it way beyond what any visual can give you. Radio does that. Radio will always do that. And radio permeates everywhere. In the workforce, in your car, home, on your smartphone, on your computer, radio is not 
a dying media. It is so bad. Well, and I wish Mike McVeigh could have been here. He had some emergencies he had to take care of back in, in Minneapolis uh, with the station. But, uh, but he came to me about almost three years ago and said, Donnie, would you be interested in doing your own radio show? I said, yes. Can you give me some advice as we do this? And he said something that really affected me. He said, when you're talking, you're talking to one person with a, I hope I have more people listening than one person. He said, no, you're talking to one person. You make it real. I learned this from Howard Stern. I know that may sound funny to use the, the names of Donnie Osmond and Howard Stern in the same sentence. But I was asked by Howard to do his show years ago, and it's, they still air it. I don't know if any of you have heard this. Every once in a while, guys are coming, Donnie, I heard you on Howard Stern, but man, you're cool. My advisors, my family, my friends, everybody, when this invitation came, they said, don't do it. He'll bury you. He will make a mockery of you. Well, I like challenges. If you don't want, if you want me to do something, tell me I can't do it. That's exactly what I would like. I like to climb mountains. That Howard Stern challenge was a big mountain for Donnie Osmond to climb, so I said, I'm doing it. So New York City, waiting in the green room, and I'm sweating bullets. I'm sweating so much, I got tacos under my arms, man, and it's bad. I'm ready to walk out of that building thinking, my friends and family and, and advisors were right. I'm going to die. And it was like an epiphany. It was like the heavens opened up, right? Two words came to my mind. Be yourself. I think what Mike McVeigh told me, talking to one person, make it real. Make the stories you're talking about real. Don't try to overdo it. When I do my radio show, I, I'll probably do four or five takes. But yesterday, I remember doing uh, for the show uh, four takes of this one thing. Not to make it perfect, to make it real. Usually, I'll use the first take. But that, matter of fact, that fourth take that I use, there's mistakes in it. And there's a part in it, there's a segment in, in my show, I, we, we call, internally we call it showbiz moment. Um, it's experiences in my life, things I've done. Uh, and I've used this story maybe twice, maybe three times in the last two and a half years. But it's how you tell it, it's the angle, it's, it's the angle you create for the, for the person listening so they can visualize what they want. Here's the story. Early 70s, I'm on, on tour. In Paris, at a hotel called the George the Saint Hotel. Maybe you know the hotel, it's a very famous hotel. There's a knock at the door. I open it up as Paul McCartney. He's standing there with his daughter Mary. He says, Hello, Donnie. I'm Paul McCartney. I said, Yeah, I know. <laughs> he said, uh, This is my daughter Mary. She's a huge fan. She would love to get your Can I get your autograph for my daughter? Yeah. So he hands me a picture that Mary had of me, and I said, to Mary, love, Donny Osmond. I give it to Paul. He says, thank you very much. And I said, welcome. And the door closes. I walk back in the room. I think, what just happened? Fast forward to 2003. I'm in London at a video studio, um, editing a music video. Paul is in the studio next door to me. And I'm thinking, i got to verify this story. Maybe I made it up. Maybe I dreamt it. You know how you, when you tell stories, they get better and better every time you tell them? i got to verify this. So I walk in. I say, hey, Paul. I say, Donnie, how are you? And we talk. We had some pleasantries. You know, we just talked a little bit. I say, Paul, i got to verify this story. And I related this story to him just as like I related to you. And he said, Donnie, getting out of 